and welcome to Allen High School. This is chemistry at the pre-AP or honors level and you are welcome to join us as we begin our discussion of the laboratory, safety rules, equipment, and measurement. So let's have at it. Now when we talk about the laboratory that's pretty inclusive of quite a few things, some of which are old, so there'll be some old news, and some of which is new, very specific to chemistry. So let's take a look at what we have here. All right, what, why learn about chemistry? What's so important? You know what, we're going to do this in class. So we're gonna do just a brainstorming activity to see what you already know, a lot which you can gain from the television alone. Some good, some not so good. Okay, so we're gonna start here where you need a little bit more of my explanation. Now, there are a lot of people who like to talk about a scientific method, but I'll be honest with you, I don't think there's necessarily a method per se, but there is a, a process, a cycle per, that we would go through over and over and over again as we continually refine and develop new ways to measure. So I would argue, I know some people, and probably in biology, they talked a lot about starting with a hypothesis. Well, I would argue that science really starts with a question. Um, you have to be curious to be a good scientist. You want to look around you or read articles and be continually asking questions. Why? What happens if? Uh, Mr. Coder will do that. He'll say, you know, what, what happens if we did this? And my response is typically, I don't know, let's try it. Um, because that's part of the fun of being a chemist. So we want to start with a question. Now once we have the question, we want to do some early observation and research uh, before we can make a hypothesis. And that's why we don't make you write hypotheses for our labs because you usually don't have the basis that you need to write a good hypothesis. All right, when we do those observations, either by reading an article or doing some preliminary experimentation, we have two types of data. We have qualitative data. Qualitative data is based on observations. We're going to use our senses for our qualitative data. What does it look like? What is its texture? Is it bumpy? Is it smooth? Is it shiny? Is it dull? Uh, is it tiny granular? Is it liquid? Is it clear, colorless, uh, opaque? So those are all qualitative. What about odor? Does it smell? What kind of odor do we do we detect? Is heat released? Uh, if we can put our hands near enough without burning ourselves, can we feel heat being generated? Those are all qualitative. Uh, quantitative is based on numbers and measurement. So quantitative is going to have um, both a number and a unit. Be very, very careful. Number and unit associated with it. Now, once we have that, we can develop a hypothesis. Uh, there are two main criteria that we will focus on. Uh, the first, for a valid hypothesis, we have to have conditional language. Uh, you used a lot in biology, likely. That's, it's very common in biology to use if-then because it's a sure bet. With, if you're using if-then language, it's a sure bet that it's conditional. But we can also use words like might or may or possibly, do you see what I mean? Those are conditional, they're not absolutes, they're not will, which is an absolute. This will do that, okay? Now, the next is that it must be testable. We have to have a way to measure it, either uh, qualitative observations or quantitative observations. We have to have some way to test our hypothesis because to be a good hypothesis, it has to be falsifiable. And if we want to falsify something, we have to measure that something. Okay. Then we do the experiment and we test the hypothesis. And then we go back. Based on that experiment, we are either going to support the hypothesis and we want to do more experiments to refine it and maybe move on to a theory, which we'll see in just a minute, or many, many times Many times experiments reject or, or refute the hypothesis, but that's not always a bad thing because even if it refutes the hypothesis, it can still lead to new ideas and new questions. All right, so negative results in a sense are still good results. 
All right. Now, that means that the scientific method per se is really an ongoing cycle done by one or more chemists. All right. Now, let's take a look at a couple of examples and then we will finish up this video. We want to look at whether these hypotheses are valid or not. I have two cats. I have Tigger. Now, Tigger used to weigh 30 pounds. He lost weight because he's been kind of sick. Um, Nala, I haven't weighed her. I bet she weighs four or five pounds. Just a teeny, teeny, tiny thing. So I, I watch the cats and I observe their eating habits and Tigger eats a can and a half of food at a time and Nala might eat a quarter of a can at a time. And, and I, I watched that for a while and I made a hypothesis. My hypothesis is that Tigger enjoys his food more than Nala. So the question is, did I do a good job on my hypothesis? Well, hopefully you remember from biology in eighth grade and seventh grade and all the many times you've had the scientific method that the answer is no. For one, we can't test a cat's enjoyment. So that is not a testable statement, all right? Um, we can maybe propose that and, and you know, have a conjecture about that. Uh, we certainly know he eats more, but we don't know how much he enjoys eating. He may just be eating to get rid of those hunger feelings. And look at, this is an absolute, does enjoy. He enjoys, There's, it's, it's not conditional. So it's not testable, it's not conditional, it's a pretty, stinky little hypothesis, okay? So that's not a good one. Let's take a look at the next one. Mr. Coder is making sure he's got a wonderful truck and he wants to keep it in good shape. And he noticed that he had to add air in his tire when winter came, but when it warmed up, they'd be just fine. So he hypothesized that a decrease in temperature may cause the pressure in his tire to decrease. In other words, he said a decrease in temperature causes a decrease in pressure. And we have tools that measure temperature and pressure and we'll do that in our lab. So this is certainly testable. And because we use the word may, it is also conditional. Okay, so that's a good, that's a very good hypothesis. Now this last one, we have leaf color and temperature. And so we're talking about exposing plants to low temperatures will result in changes in leaf color. So we can do this, we can decrease the temperature and we can observe changes and uh, later on, and maybe more in AP, you'll talk about ways we can actually measure colors so yes, but at least we can observe those colors with our eyes, all right? So this is testable. That's, that's good on that front. But notice this word here, will. It is not conditional. So this is a bad hypothesis. Not a good one. Would not count well. All right, now example one, two, we're going to be doing in class, the example on Berry Berry, so you can talk it over with your friends. So until I see you, this is signing off.